Hello, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this chapter, we're going to start to learn about alcohols, ethers, and epoxides. Now, alcohols, ethers, and epoxides is chemistry that pretty much we've already learned about. Nothing really new here. Towards the end, we'll learn a little bit when it comes to epoxides, but most of the reactions that take place in this chapter is really review, okay? So there's not many new things to learn. However, we're going to put our focus into these different functional groups. Okay, the way we're going to organize this is that each chapter is going to be, uh, each topic or each functional group will be broken up into its own series of videos. Okay, so for the next two videos, we're going to be learning about alcohols. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to name them, their properties like boiling point and solubility, and we'll also go into the synthesis of alcohols. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to review a little bit about nomenclature and I'm going to pull up the big chart that I went through when we first learned about nomenclature of functional groups. But before we get there, let me just refresh your memory about a very important detail. An alcohol is when you have an sp3 carbon, very important, bonded to a hydroxy or a hydroxyl group. Now, this is important because, for example, this right here is an alcohol because the carbon in red right here, that carbon is sp3, right? This carbon has two H's, a methyl, and an, o and an oxygen touching it. So it has to be all single bonds. If you have an alcohol like this, then it's really not an alcohol. This is a completely different functional group. It's known as an ene all. So it's an alkene all alcohol, and those are very different. So this is not an alcohol. And they have their own functionality. It has its own properties. Everything's different, and it behaves very differently than a sp3 carbon that holds a hydroxy group. Okay, So it's important that you recognize that. You guys have also heard, let's say, phenol, right? So phenol is just like enol, but it's in a benzene. So this is called a phenol. And the key is that it has ene all, right? Ene all. And so these don't act like alcohols. Now, alcohols, we know, have a lot of different reactivity. It has different properties to it. It could act as an acid. It could act as a base. It could act as a nucleophile. It could act as a leaving group. So it has a lot of reactivity that you don't see in an enol. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, I want to go over this because you really just, this is the master chart that we went through when we learned about how to name molecules, right? So the best thing to do is just to review this right here. Now one thing I'll add to it is before substituent, we have the stereo indicator when necessary. So this could be something like, so for stereo, I'll put that right here. It could be R, it could be S, it could be cis, trans, E, or Z. Right? So your stereo indicator comes first, and then you go through the rest of the nomenclature, substituents, and then the parent. Now, recall that the substituent is simply a branch off of the main parent chain. Right, So you have methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl. We add a YL if it's an alk group, and then bromo, fluoro, chloro, and so on. If it's a halogen, you add the ORO. Right, So these are the different substituent types. And we use di, tri, tetra, penta in order to emphasize the same thing many times. And don't forget that you always have to say where the substituent's located by using a number. Okay. Now, as far as the parent goes, with a parent, there are two parts that you can think of, the prefix and the infix. So the prefix is like alk, like meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, and so on. Now, that is not with the A-N-E or E-N-E, because that's the infix. So the prefix is just, what's the number of carbons? If it's five, it's pent. And then you go into the infix to figure out the next part of the name. Now, the next part of the name is either an ane, ene, or ine. So if there's all single bonds, there's no double bond, it's an ane, right? If there's a triple, it's an ine. If there's a double, it's an ene. And remember that with this infix, you could say the location. And it's very important that you do that if it's a double bond or a triple bond. So with, if it's only one functional group, like a double bond, then you could put the name or the number where it's located outside right before the prefix. Okay, But if there's more than one functional group or if it's complex, then usually the number goes right before the infix. Okay, I'll give you an example of both to refresh your memory. 
Finally, you have the suffix. And the suffix is the functional group of the actual molecule. So if there's nothing there, then you just add an E at the end. Like if it's an alkane, then add an E and you're done. The same thing with alkene and alkyne. The ene and ine take care of the functional group, right? So you just add an E and you're finished. But if it's, let's say, an amine, so if there's a nitrogen touching it, then it's an amine at the end. You add the word amine at the end of your parent or the, the, fun the name of the molecule. In our case, alcohol, which is what we really want to focus in on, it's an all, O-L at the end. And then, of course, there's ketone, aldehyde, and carboxylic acid, and we'll kind of go back into that. Now, it's, what's really important is suffix has the highest priority, which means it has to be on the lowest possible number. Now, remember, you can't start from the middle of the molecule and number it one, so you can't do that, but you have to find an end, but you always find the end closest to your functional group, okay? And this is the priority. So an alcohol has a higher priority than an alkene or an alkyne or even an amine, right, an amine. So it has the higher priority than those groups. And then everything above it, of course, has a higher priority than it. And so let's go ahead and use this as a, like a general template and let's go over an example. So let's say I have a double bond here, I have a BR here, and I have an OH right there. Now, if I was to look at this, the f if it wasn't for the alcohol, let's consider that for a moment. If, it, if I didn't have this alcohol, I would definitely number one on the left because that gives me a double bond, first group, the first branch, or I should say so, um, a priority thing, in our case functional group, is on number one. And that would be great. And then this would be two, this would be three, four, five, and six. That would be how I would number this if there wasn't an alcohol. Okay, so notice that in our case we have an alcohol. And so this would not be the correct way to number it, and I'll show you why. You see, the real priority is not about BR or the alkene, it's about the OH, because that's a high, it's a functional group, and it's a higher priority than an alkene. Alcohol, um, the halogen is just the same as a substituent, right? It's just a branch. It has no priority whatsoever when it comes to functional groups compared to just branches, right? So in our case, we'd rather this be one, on the right because then our, our OH is number two and that's lower than five. So we would not want to name it that way up above because that gives us our highest priority and a higher number, five. And so it's better to number this way even though we have branching that actually winds up being much higher numbers, right? So we have a one for the alkene. We always number where it begins, not where it ends. So it's one. And then on top I'm looking at and three for the bromo. But down below it's five and four for the alkene and the bromo, right? So it, you would think that this isn't right, but it actually is. So this is correct right here. And it's because of the high priority of our alcohol. And so this should hopefully refresh your memory about this. Now let's name it. So when I look at this, I would say I have a, always the stereo first, right? And there is no stereo. There's no RS, there's no cis trans, there's no EZ. So we're done with stereo. Then we say, okay, we have a four bromo a four dash bromo. Remember, numbers are always separated by letters with a hyphen, and numbers are separated from each other with a comma, okay? So four bromo, and then we have a, now it's up to us. Do we want to say where the double bond begins now, or do we want to wait right before the ene? And in our case, usually I go ahead and put it right now. If there's not much complexity, then I would put it right now in the beginning. So I would say five, because that's where the double bond begins, five, and then now finally the parent, right? So we're about to reference this, the prefix first. So the, the prefix, then the infix. So we have a hex, five hex, and then the, the infix is en, en, and then all. But we can't just write all. We have to say where is the all? Where is the alcohol? So two, all. And that is correct. We could have also, I'll write or, we could write four bromo, hex dash five en dash two all and that is correct as well so do you put the number five before the parent name begins or do you put it right next to the en and it's up to you how you do it it's a, they're both correct they're both acceptable okay and that's it so this is basically how it works